<sighs> Doesn't this day just fly by? Wow. I guess that's a good sign. You know, when a good time is had, it goes too fast. So we thank you all for your addition to this beautiful day because we don't do this without you. So let's come into that meditative, receptive, heart opening position again. Take, take some nice deep breaths, inhaling through your nose, exhaling with a big sigh. Ah. Again, a little deeper this time. Big inhale. Ah. Okay, and for whatever dusty corners in there still need to be reached, inhale. Ah. Very good. Just let your body soften, shoulders soften. Just come on down from your ears. And let your mind come to a quiet place right in the center where that pineal gland is. Feel yourself in the chair, feet on the floor. And perhaps you can imagine your own inner crystalline grid, however that is for you. Might be little twinkling lights connected by monofilaments. Or it could be interwoven strands of gold. And then from there, come on down into your legs and then into your feet. And know that beneath your shoes, beneath the carpet, Beneath the foundation of this building is Gaia, our beautiful mother, so receptive and so interactive as we connect to the crystalline grid of Gaia in our hearts, in our bodies, through our intention in this moment. and feel her pulsating up through your feet into your body saying hello dear friend it's good to feel your vibration again and know that there are people who are not in this room in the physical but they know that this event is taking place today and they are with us through the grid and those in the non-physical are with us through the grid allow yourself to be wrapped in the arms and the love of that grid that non-physical magnetic crystalline spiritual grid mm. And as we share that together, the pulsation of Gaia increases and her light and her love pulses through us, beams out through us, like a light that can be seen from space. We create this energy together. We raise our vibrations together so that we are ready to receive the beautiful, loving information, the guidance for the year 2014 that Kryon has called the year of divinity and the year of celebration. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. And so we're back. And it seemed like only a moment ago we said to you to open your hearts and expect different kinds of messages, different attributes of the time that are coming this year. My partner steps aside. 
And when I say that, that means that he is here. And he is listening to every word. He's using the intuition through his pineal that what is being presented is accurate and true from a source that he trusts. It's his way of validating what is presented all of these years. This has been his process. And even this begins to recalibrate. Dear human being, we have told you that you have walked through a year of difficulty for some, for many. Now as we present this information we are aware of the listenership and eventually the readership and that there are those who will be listening to this for them it is live, it is now because it is their first listen or their first read and it may be months after the clock of reality strikes your ears. That is to say that I speak to the entire group in a timeline that is not linear and it's great. The numbers are far larger than you would think of those who might be drawn to this message. To hear perhaps what is in store this year for them. We do not have prophecy. Instead, we have potential. We see a bigger picture of the kinds of things which are moving in certain directions. An overview that is given to us through over seven billion souls all working on both sides of the veil at some level to achieve change that you may not expect. And the first things I want to say out of my mouth <laughs> is that change is slow. And so this is not a marker that will become 2014 the year of transformation or the year of, of significant change. It is the beginning. It is the beginning of the harvest of seeds which were planted in 2012. And the harvest itself is slow. One plant at a time. One life at a time. And so we want you to keep in mind that these things, again, not generic for all, but as an average overall for old souls, you're going to experience some shifts like I'm going to talk about now. First, what does it feel like today for you? <laughs> Do you feel the shift in energy? We invite you to. No matter who's listening or reading, we invite you to feel what is there. There has been a shift in the energy on this planet from 2013 to 2014. It didn't happen in a moment. But the shift is there. It's like a light is being turned on in the darkness. Like there is, there is an awareness that was not there before. It gives you hope. A word we told you not to use. <laughs> Let's talk about what you're in for, however. Let us say, for an example, that you had an accident and it affects somehow your ability to walk. And let us say that you had a successful repair of the accident. And that was 2013 called the accident. Now the successful repair has been accomplished what is next? And it's called physical therapy. <laughs> is it pleasant? It can be. Because every step you take is a step that you could not before now. Every step is better than the next. 
Is it uncomfortable? It could be. When a child learns to walk and intuitively they're remembering the Akash of walking before they still are uncoordinated with the new tools and they fall down occasionally. Have you ever climbed a lot of stairs? I mean a lot of stairs. And you get to the top and you realize you're sore. You've used muscles you haven't used in the past. And you are so glad the stairs are over with and done. Never realizing you're going to have to climb down again. <laughs> and then when you do, you realize there's other muscles <laughs> that are hurting just as much going down as coming up. What we're trying to tell you is that there is work to be done and it might feel awkward and that is the word we want to use not painful not difficult not really awkward as you test the waters old soul of new paradigms of belief we ask you to trust synchronicity more than ever before we ask you to trust intuitive thought more than ever before we ask you to stand your ground in intuition more than ever before. To know the appropriateness of turning the other cheek and at the same time holding the truth of the love of God. A truth that we said to you would be seen by others as strength and not weakness. And that is the shift. It's the perception of what is going on by those who are not aware of what you are aware of. So this means that the earth is involved in the kind of awareness even though they may not believe in channeling or anything that's happening. But they all feel shift. Sometimes it's frightening to those who don't know what's happening. Can you imagine being frightened because things are going ways you didn't expect them to go? The normal of life is shifting around. Can you imagine that kind of fear for your neighbors and your friends and your associates or your family when they see things around them that they didn't want to see or energies that were shifting that may actually threaten their survival and the only stable thing they have got is you. <laughs> and when you they see not just stability, they see peace. What do you think they're going to do? The first thing is they're going to forget everything they said <laughs> that hurt you. They're going to cling to your coattails because they want a piece of what you got. I am telling you the truth. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually they will see strength in the centering that you bring. If you're not spinning in drama, if you're not spinning in fear, and yet around you are changes because you are aware of what they are, that's strength. We told you the old ways of the planet were starting to shift. Things out of integrity are going to start to fail more often than not. Those who have featured greed in all of the things that they have done are going to start to fail. Greed used to be a survival instinct in the cave era of the development and evolution of humanity. It is no longer a survival aspect in the new energy. Greed is old and it's ugly and it's dark and humanity begin to see it for what it is it's not going to be a tool that works it just isn't therefore there are businesses on the planet making a living with greed who are not going to survive and you're going to see this soon it is not a survival aspect in fact, it's going to be that 
an energy that's going to bring about the opposite. You will see it, you will know it, you will not go for it. And that brings me to some of the other things that are going to shift dramatically over time and will fly in the face of every paradigm that exists. Your normality has to do with you leaving this building, getting in your auto, going home. Some of you going to work, some of you doing metaphysical healing work, some of you reporting to factories and schools and hospitals. I know who's here. What if I told you that every single one of those is going to change? And eventually the paradigm that lets them run smoothly won't work unless changes are put in place. There come a time when those who run governments and run businesses will wring their hands and say, what is it that we're doing wrong? When these things used to work time after time after time called human nature and suddenly they're not. What are we doing wrong? And there's going to be a paradigm of a model of a human being who sits in peace, centered in the love of God, that they will see. And it's going to be all over the planet because old souls are in every single place you can imagine. Some of them will come to a meeting like this because they don't want their face to be known. But they are on board with this. And some of them are in the strangest places you might imagine who will hear this and I'm speaking to them now. And they know I'm right. Because they can see it coming too. And so I'm going to cover just certain elements. And I'm not going to give a prophecy. I'm going to give a reality of potential. Some of these you have heard before, but not necessarily in this detail. And so I'll start with the church. Dear ones, if you are leaders in any one of the religions on this planet, I have a message for you and it goes like this. First of all, congratulations for your work for humanity. If you're working with the love of God and that is your purpose, you're doing the work of God. And the various cultures will respond differently to the various things that you would have and that is the difference of humanity. The love of God is in every single place you can look. It's in the synagogues and in the mosques. It's in the churches. Healings occur in all of them. You're at the right place at the right time to make change. And here are your instructions. Spiritual leader, religious leader, follow the common sense of God. Examine that which you would call the rules of your organization or your doctrine and weigh them against the love of God. If you've portrayed God in fear or in judgment, or you've made the other person wrong because they don't worship in the right place, re-examine this in the light of the love of God within yourself and make the shift. And here's what we're going to tell you. If you don't, you're going to lose the following you have taken for granted. Simple. Simple. And it's easy to measure. How many men and women are signing up to be like you? Priest? <laughs> Imam? Rabbi? How many? How many young people in the ranks can hardly wait to be like you? And if you're seeing a slowdown of the interest to be a leader in your group, you're doing something wrong. Why wait until it all dries up and evaporates and you're in trouble? Why not now? 
weigh these things in the light of the love that you feel yourself that brought you there to begin with to lead other human beings and show them the light that's there all of you that's one group it's an important group we've told you before that old survival techniques create separation and in religious circles separation has been part of the old survival energy what if I told you that the opposite will keep your church alive compassion for the other group not that they're doing it wrong compassion that they're doing it differently and seeing the love of God in them as well as you and letting it be that's spiritual evolution we told you that is the key look for it business men and women we want to talk to you <laughs> about old paradigms and new paradigms and what the public is going to accept and reject every single businessman and woman who is listening to this particular channeling who is a CEO a CFO or in charge of large groups of people listen up your existence depends upon you selling something <laughs> and you know that and there are old attributes of selling something there's a structure that removes you from the consumer I want to tell you something that is about to crumble let me just get right to it <laughs> the CEO who makes it public that they're gonna tie their salary to performance at the corporation is gonna have success the good old boys club who moves around from corporation to corporation as CEO <coughs> getting enormous bonuses no matter what happens and feeling free to fire those because they are not doing well and still taking the bonuses are out of integrity and it's not gonna work because the public will not buy your product how's that how does it feel to you it's a shift of a paradigm because the consumer is gonna start to look at your salary it's gonna be common knowledge and I will tell you business owner that if you'll make it public what you're doing and you will tie in your salary to the success of the corporation and have everybody included the products you sell will be revered human beings will make choices not out of a human nature that they did in the past or even on the merits of your product but more about the consciousness that you created in competing with others around you watch for it it's gonna happen feel free to advertise it that you have decided to do something integrity and common sense in business which aligns itself very very well with what regular human beings would expect of a leader of a group of people making a product there are those who would say that businesses should all fail and everything should be given away <laughs> perhaps a day will come when those kinds of things are possible but not in this energy not yet so take the structures you have and repair them <laughs> and repair them with compassionate action and see where they evolve from from there who is next <laughs> politician I want you to listen to me I have instructions and you're going to disagree and if you're hearing this and you're a politician you will say to me no way this is not going to work and I'll tell you why you'll say that because traditionally you're right in an old survival energy the way you have politicked has worked 
and not anymore. And you're going to see this come about. I want to ask you, politician, as you run against an opponent, what is your strategy? What has worked before, and what do your advisors tell you? And here are my instructions for you. You're going to have to override your advisors, and you're going to have to do it soon. Because your advisors are steeped in the old ways of human nature awareness. And they will be blindsided and you're going to lose if you do not follow these instructions for the future. And here they are. No more negative campaigning ever. If you're attacked by an opponent, do not return the attack. Instead, you can defend through the facts and that which holds integrity without an angry face without an angry face never returning the attack I would like to tell you what the new human nature is going to see between the two opponents balance and unbalance one is attacking 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 the bully the other one is holding their ground in integrity without an angry face and just stating the fact the reasons why you should vote for them giving the facts, giving a positive attitude, never showing that which you even may feel is a wounding of the heart from that which is a dark attack and you never return it. Old traditional thought would say you're going to lose because the public will only remember the drama. And that, my friend, is going to change. What they're going to see and remember is your balance. And that is the leadership they're going to want. They're not going to want an angry, ugly, attacking politician. They want a balanced one with integrity and gentleness into these offices that will make a difference and will be able to compromise and move things forward in a society. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm hearing your response. <laughs> That's not going to work, right? Well, I hope you're not on the receiving side of my advice and your opponent takes it and you don't. It'll be too late and you'll know I'm right. You see, human beings are becoming more aware. There is a factor of honesty, transparency, and integrity that they are starting to accomplish within their own human nature and they're going to start being disgusted by attacking politicians. They will see them as spoiled children, having arguments. And the one who will stand out is the one who does not return the attack and holds their own. Gentleness, appropriateness, strength, and balance. Now the next one you're not going to understand. And it's a very finite message I'm going to give to a very, very few human beings on the planet. And you may think when I tell you who I'm talking to that none of these will ever hear this message and that's where you're going to be wrong. <laughs> because I know the potential who, who is listening and what their ears are going to hear. It may even be socially inappropriate, what I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to ask my partner to go slow, so that the mail he receives will be to a minimum. <laughs> I want to talk to dictators, and there are a few. There is actually a place on the planet for dictators. And the reason is because there are certain cultures that are not yet ready for the sophistication of modern democracy. And that it will take them a number of years before even the concepts of making these kinds of choices are clear. Because they've been under fear dictatorship rules for so many generations. 
And so there is an appropriateness of a leader who is in charge of everything. Now that flies in the face of social appropriateness. Dictators. I want to tell you something that I've said before only marginally but I'm going to tell it to all of you. You have an opportunity to lead your people into abundance and be the most revered and loved and admired person in your country and even after you're gone the statues of you will be looked at and people will weep at the feet of it if you do it right there is a protocol for benevolent dictatorship on the planet and you can study it men and women who were in charge totally of their populations and loved them and created for them savings accounts willing to, to give them things, property and land make them work for it have a system where everybody benefited, let them travel freely they always come home because it's better at home <laughs> believe it or not there is a protocol for that a protocol for opening borders being seen as the peacemaker as the gentle benevolent dictator who loves his people for life. Dictators, listen, if you're doing it through fear and control, your days are numbered. They just are. And if you don't believe me, I want you to look around the planet right now, the countries who are in trouble, and that is why. They have populations who are awakening to it. If it's done through strength, force, fear, your days are numbered. Right now, the strife on the planet in the various countries, you didn't expect it to be is because of that. If people see in you the benevolence that you could have for them and not the fear, if you rule through benevolence and balance and love, they're not going to want to leave. They're going to see you as the Father. And they're going to love you. You have an opportunity to switch this and still hold that which you dearly want to hold. which is that of being respected. What can you give your people you haven't thought of? I want you to study how it's done. If you don't, you won't remain. It's not a prophecy. This is a potential that's probably going to happen. There are going to be two of you who are demised this year. Two! And you know you don't think so, do you, as you're listening to this? You think everything is fine, don't you? Would you ask the leaders who are going through it right now if they thought it was fine the moment before they were deposed or their people rose up in anger and now they're in trouble. Now is your opportunity and 2014 is the time you can start the change. And you might say, you're wrong, Cryon. My lineage is set and the lineage before me and my fathers are the same and I'll be just fine. And I'm going to say, no you won't. Because those around you are going to have a different awareness and that which you think works is going to change. And those are the groups I wanted to talk to. Specifically, those are the groups the potentials on the planet that I have just given you revolve around what? Awareness of human nature changing. And it's not just where I sit in the United States. It's everywhere. This is planetary. There's going to be difficulty in areas that you didn't expect because of this and it's coming soon. Human awareness that is starting to shift away from the old energy is going to be so available to see light instead of wallowing in darkness. And so the last part of this channel I return to the old soul. And I'm going to ask you how are you today? You ought to be able to get through this without fear 
without anxiety, without waking up at three in the morning and wondering if you're going to make it. I know who's here. I know who I'm talking to. There's an appropriateness in every single template of DNA in every single soul that I know in this room listening to my voice and reading these words. There's a time for life. There's a time for the next life. There's a time for transition. And you're so different. Every single one of you has your own path. But here's what I can tell you. We know who you are. And all we want is for you to take the hand of God and start to enhance yourself, to live longer, and be here to work this puzzle. And there's some, even in this room, and listening to my voice, to say, well, that wouldn't be me, because I'm not going to be here that long, or I'm not going to come back, or I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, and I've heard it. And yet the magnificence of your soul yells otherwise. And it's time for you to listen up. You're beloved. You deserve to be here. Maybe it's time for you to be with people who support you instead of drag you down. And you also know who I'm talking to, dear ones. That's standing up for yourself. That's being in the love of God. That's courageous. You're going to have support. Are you going to have to move out? Yeah, you know who I'm talking to. Are you going to have to move away from per perhaps your city or your circumstances? Maybe. But you'll have support and you're not alone and you're not in a vacuum because we are with you. We are with you. We are with you. Time to change the paradigm. This is the year to begin. Divinity is the operative word because you are discovering it within. The more you see your divine self and are aware of the strength that you carry through compassion, the clearer your life will be and the longer you will live. Could it be any clearer? <laughs> now go and do and be. And so it is.